Hello, it's Trucker Joe, and welcome to update 2.2.27. Uh, In this update, we have some significant additions such as missile gauges, mimic blocks, and laser cutters. So first things first, I want to demonstrate this laser cutter which I put on a robotic arm, just, just for this occasion. And we're going to spawn in a foray and make sure turning that off. it's actually turned off. As you can see, the turret will cut through and if anything gets in between the, uh, the center, it just gets shredded because of the laser cutter. And as you can see, it destroyed the cutter, which is super irritating. I cut the last video because of this, but oh well. It looks like it's going to struggle to rebuild, uh, but yeah, anyway, if I actually go on this, the laser cutter is still technically there. So here it is, in the menu. Uh, basically, it takes a laser, goes from uh, two points, and that destroys, and it like cuts through whatever it's, uh, like whatever comes in between it. Unfortunately, it doesn't normally fail like this. In fact, I had a take where it actually worked perfectly, but then I sneezed and my mic cable got tweaked. Let's go ahead and get on to the more important things. So as you can see, we have new missile gauges. We have these missiles which take up a significant amount of more ammo, but also deal more damage. And these are the medium missiles then we have the cluster missiles, or as, as far as I like to call them. And they cost about the same as these medium ones. They're just in smaller packets. They're smaller, more maneuverable, and faster. While these are bigger and they pack a little bit more concentrated firepower. However, these large ones are significantly more powerful than both of those uh, combined. So. Yeah, the large missiles are crazy. So we have rail launchers, and we have various rail things. We have rail gantries, uh, rail launchers, and uh, invisible rail gantries. So I just kind of want to demonstrate for uh, science purposes that if I put a rail launcher up here, I can then place a rail launcher uh, gantry behind and it will still count. So this is one of the cases where you can actually put gantries in between. And on top of that, the real, the actual like launcher can contain a missile part, which uh, isn't actually significant for this because I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, so yeah, uh, we have a new block to go with this it is the remote guidance. And what it does is this, it does this, it points to where the AI is trying to aim at, or where the player is aiming at if they fire the missile. Uh, it's actually quite uh, amazing. Uh, they cost a certain amount of general purpose processing power, and the more, the less you have, the more inaccurate they become. So these need at least 16 each for the large ones. Medium ones take at least four. The small ones equate to four, but each individual missile uses one. We also have uh, uh, parts with uh, actual internal space, such as one turns, which, yeah, they're quite crazy. So you could, for example, Add in some volume, so say we want EMP damage, we can add the EMP, high explosive reinforcement or fuel, and it will add the, that component. So like for this, I'm just going to use reinforcement because if you look at it, you can more than double your health. That said, I have a feeling these are actually relative because regulators don't actually add 80 lifetime. Like you compare it to this, Lifetime is 80. Okay, the lifetime is 80. This is 120. So that's actually 40. 
uh, seconds of lifetime in one block. If I were to add regulators to this, just as an example, it's only give, going to give me 5 seconds. This one is only going to give me 10 seconds. And this one is only going to give me 20 seconds. But when you have like, what when you have this, uh, but it seems to be proportional to the amount of size of the missile. For example, this one gets 40 seconds, this one gets uh, 20 seconds. It's about when it's like, I'm guessing it's equal to whatever double it is divided by the number of parts or something. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Maybe. Uh, either way, I'm going to jump out of my seat so that I can demonstrate something. So we have uh, the missile bays as well that open up. Uh, we have the small one, we have the uh, medium aerodynamic one, we have the uh, medium regular gantry and hatch, and the difference between these two is that one of them is two blocks and opens up quicker, but it's really that not, not much of a difference. And we have the large missile hatch, which is the slowest hatch actually. You don't have to worry about how long it takes for them to open. They will always open in time for the missile to fire. I'm assuming if they couldn't, that would be a problem. So good on them for actually making sure that they open properly. Uh, an important thing to note with the large one is that it's actually structurally sound uh, component. So it grants an armor bonus to whatever is behind it like and in front of it. This one however even though it looks like it might be it isn't. It doesn't have that quality. Uh, the gantry also like this one if you look at the stats here technically the aerodynamic catches are probably they're a little more efficient but they're also they also poke out a little that's why I can place blocks to either side. You can't do it with the others. So yeah, so that's something to keep in mind. You can't just like place it anywhere, it pokes out slightly. Uh, so that's actually kind of weird though. Like in theory, I could just place it. Anyway, they also added multiple sizes of a refinery. So you have your big refinery, then you have your small refinery, and then you have your baby refinery. These are not actually new blocks, these are the medic block. As you can see, you can do things like recreate other blocks, like the refinery, and rescale them. You could take things that this you'd be able to use on anything, I think. Like these are actually the fortress turbines, and they're made into like flare stacks. And this is just a bigger example that I put smoke in and it looks like something that you'd see on a steamer. So I imagine people would actually do that. In fact, I actually am going to increase the opacity so that it's white. There we go, now it's actually a steamer. They also added this, which I have no idea if this will spawn close enough, Turning off. It was close, but then it was too far. Let's spawn it west. Gunnery enabled. Turning off. As you can see, this thing is firing despite not having a direct line of sight, and its projectiles are arcing. And it hits the surface. So yes, they, the devs actually added a new uh, setting for the advanced cannon system that causes it to go, f that you can choose high shots or low shots. So for example, you can have it set to, where is it? 
can go for only high angles, only low angles, which this thing will not fire. Prefer low angles, which it'll go for a high arc because it can't actually get a low arc. Prefer high arcs, which goes for high arcs unless it can't, then it does a low arc. And only high, which means that it only functions like an artillery. So as you can see here, it's not the most accurate cannon. But when the shots do land, they are dealing significant amounts of damage. Uh, and they're coming overhead, like you would expect artillery. Uh, I don't know how many a actual uh, uh, applications there are for this, because being able to fire in like a low arc is usually better, and you can get higher speeds that way. But this is good for those builds where maybe you want to have like artillery cannons sporting out the sides and like the top. And that's how you would do it. Okay, so I'm going to spawn something on Porpoise. That name was Porpoiseful, by the way. So I'm going to spawn in a submarine. Lightning Hoods. We're going to start with a Bifrost. And as you can see, it detected it was a submarine, started firing things. It fired a stray cruise missile because it didn't know what it was firing at. So if we go to path view, we can see like these missiles, we can see where they're headed. I need detection. Uh, okay, here's the Bifrost. So I had to resort to using that. So we go to the path view. It's basically firing a whole bunch of torpedoes. Off into the distance. But they have to like turn around before they can actually engage. But now that they have, they can start actually engaging. We already have one coming in. So we, it took a big hit, that took a huge chunk off of the uh, advanced cannon. Now we have another couple of missiles. And these are just the torpedoes. That's below 50 and sinking, so let's spawn in the next thing. Uh, let's spawn in some planes, shall we? Let's spawn in a couple daggers and a Solaris. Just to make it more exciting. So, Solaris is probably going to be the target of the initial missiles, and the ones that miss are probably going to go for uh, the uh, smaller vessels. But yeah, so these are like cluster swarm missiles, and they're like really fast interceptors. And they can even like catch up. Uh, they're supposed to have APN guidance, but I actually don't know for sure if they do or not. But as you can see... It's like, even if they miss, they whip around very quickly. And they can, like, outmaneuver any kind of plane. Looks like we caused that one to malfunction. So, there goes its AI. Now we switch targets. Or we try to switch targets, but fail. Because their radar is sinking. So, we now have a bunch of missiles targeting Solaris because Solaris is the most health and they're no longer close by each other. So as you can see, missiles have all but disabled the Solaris, and I'm quite happy about that. It shows how much I love these kinds of missiles. They're like 
They're my favorite, by far. I'm shocked the AI didn't get disabled at this point. Now that we have disabled the AI, now the missiles are all trained on uh, this craft, the last dagger, and they're going to uh, start impacting. And each hit hurts against lightning hoods aircraft. So yeah, this one I think is going to go down. There we go. Now for the final test, we're going to spawn in an Onyx Watch uh, Warden so that we can like demonstrate uh, the cruise missiles. Let's just reset this. Let's load in a Porpoise and let's load in a Warden. That's way too close for comfort, but that's okay. So now we're firing cruise missiles, which will take a moment to actually start to lock on. We still have leftover missiles from the other vehicle. Looks like the cruise missiles are actually like looping around. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we gotta let the porpoise actually get in on distance. Are we going to get any impacts? Yes, north. And west. Forward and mid left. And now we have enough distance, our missiles are finally uh, coming in. Some of them are detonating underwater, which increases their damage. Some of them seem to be missing, which for some reason tells me that the craft got damaged. But as you can see, each one of these impacts does a very significant amount of damage. And... Gigantic... Uh, hits. So yeah, and so these large missiles... I don't know for sure how well worth, worth it they are, but they do take a ton more ammo. They also have a huge punch. So, I feel like maybe I don't need to show you through this entire battle. So I'm going to instead go load in a porpoise and load in an Eerie right there. And as you can see, these missiles just die. This is actually true for pretty much every missile, even cruise missiles. It's not very efficient, and they don't get very far out of the water, unfortunately. But it's pretty fun to watch. Anyway, I've seen rumors that their next update's going to have steam turbines. I also hope that it has the AI update, because I wanted to mess about with like the behavior of my ships for a while now. But yeah, hopefully this overview got you interested in the new update. Uh, I'm definitely going to enjoy it. I have some technical difficulties that I'm probably going to want to fix before I have another video, but I wanted to see if I could manage to make this one uh, before trying to fix them. Uh, but yeah. Anyway. Uh, see ya.